another good adventure was in Morocco and I called into a village one day for the water which they give you out of their sheepskin bags but it happened to be a Friday and which is their Sunday according to the religion and the people were sitting round about a, a stew pot knowing like a witch's cauldron and there was about eight or nine Arab gentlemen there with their big knives across their lap and tin plates so they just told me to sit cross-legged along with them and they stirred this up with their big dirty hands and big dirty finger nails and they piled this onto a plate and handed it to me but the head man he started groping about the bottom of the pot till he got the eye of a sheep so he stuck this on top of the the plate and there I was looking at this eye and it seemed to be winking at me and I said well what do I do here so I said if I don't eat it and there's five men here with big knives which we in Scotland called a gully so I make my throat cut so I just lifted the the eye and put it in my mouth and I was scared to sort of put my teeth through it in case it squirted the water or whatever's in the eye over the top of these people so I swallowed it like a, a jujube and ate some of the stew and it's supposed to be a good guest that leaves something for the the women folk so the, the women got quite a bit in my plate and I thanked them for their water but when I went down the road I got the castor oil out the bag and two spoonfuls of castor oil and hope for the best. Auchinleck sees little of Bill Houston at weekends. Weekends are for the country. Sometimes alone, sometimes with his friend Jackie, Bill is off round the roads and tracks of southwest Scotland, whatever the weather. They know every yard of them already, but that makes little difference to their enthusiasm. Their pace is easy, no one's out to break speed or distance records. The target is a local youth hostel, but that's within reasonable reach, so they can afford to stop as often as they please, perhaps to look at a view, perhaps to make a mug of tea, or perhaps to make a full meal. They have extremely healthy appetites. They're part of a nationwide fraternity of cyclists. It's not really a solitary sport. Not solitary because when you're on the road with a bicycle there, there you're sitting, as we call in Scotland, a drum up. There's people pass you by and they say there's a cyclist there, it's just one of us. And they stop and they talk. It could be the, the road mender, it could be a, a traveller of the road, a, a knight of the road it's called, or a tramp. And we really are a mechanised form of a tramp, putting it bluntly. When I was a boy I, and watched my brother going away out on his bicycle. I was only about nine or ten years of age. And he promised to give me his bike and he got fed up with it. But when he came home at night, he used to tell me where he had been and he used to look it up on the map and I said to myself, well, I'd like to do that. And when I did get his bike, that was at 11 years of age, I started going further afield than what he had done, although he was seven years older than me. So my first trip actually took me down to the Lake District at 12 years of age. Mm, well, about seven or eight shillings in my pocket. It lasted me near enough the week before I came back home. And that's what started away the, the travel. Right up till I joined the army in 1942. Bill's training as a baker sometimes comes in useful. The bread he takes on his outings, he bakes himself. The pots of jam too are homemade. From his weekends, he returns with loads of berries to be made into wine. 
it all helps to keep down the expense of living and leaves more money to pay for the long summer trips to Norway or Austria. The inventor of the bicycle is, naturally, one of Bill's heroes. He was a local blacksmith called Kirk Patrick Macmillan, who made his bicycle about 1840, and shortly afterwards had the further distinction of being the first cyclist to be fined for reckless driving on what was then a marathon trip from Dumfrieshire to display his machine in Glasgow. Bill's wife has become accustomed to having a part-time husband. But during the week when he is around Ochenlech, they have a busy social life. And like most of their neighbours, they gather at the miners' welfare. My wife, well, she came into my life, but she knew that she couldn't change it. As long as she got one or two weeks with herself, she was quite happy. I thought to myself, well, it's a shame. I've been married, that's three years, so why not take her abroad? So I asked her if she was willing to go abroad. And she said, what, are you going to buy a motor car? Oh, say you're joking now. That would be the last thing I buy. So I will say, well, get a motorbike. So I'll be able to drive a motorbike, so I'll take you in it. We bought a new motorbike last November, and I took her abroad in it to Italy, Austria, Switzerland, and France. So she enjoyed this very much. And come back home, she says, that'll be your holidays now. I said, aye, that's, what, that's your turn finished now. Uh, camera there, I take photographs, colour pictures and show them to the youth clubs and WRI, or cooperative guilds, also make wine and beer, treasure of the wine circle of the local town and also like gardening and a bud mowing roses which gives me satisfaction because when I see a nice bloom I can take it off and I have one or two of my own then, which fills up my garden. I might get a bloom from, like what I was in Ireland last year, I brought two or three blooms back from Ireland and bought a demo in and now I have a bit of Ireland and if I go to the borders, a bit of the borders or something like that. And every flower there has some small significance. If you want to see things, and especially on a bicycle, at the end of a day, if you have travelled and did something hard, you're ready for something to eat. And then when you've got something to eat and you feel that wee bit tiredness coming over you, yourself, you say, well, I have achieved something in my own two legs, your, your body. Because everybody's body is made to withstand a certain amount of punishment and this punishment is good for you, I'd think, because people are getting too soft nowadays. They're sitting in big chairs watching TV, they're, they're sitting in motor cars, they're sitting everywhere. But in a, we go out there at the weekend, we, we punish ourselves to our own satisfaction, but it's not punishment to us, it's pleasure, because when we think it's getting too hard, we just ease up that wee, wee, wee bit, and we still carry on, although it might be another hour at the end of the day, but what's an hour when you've had a day of pleasure? <laughs> In 15 minutes here on BBC Two, coverage of today's play in the third